Hi, Betty. <laughs> so one of the things that I'm I'm recognizing within myself is a trigger. As Ari is getting more capable and more wanting to be independent. Just going to in, insert here that the sound, mm -hmm. we do, I can hear it, but it just sounds like a wah, wah. Well, that's what it is. That's a sander. Somebody is sanding. Um, and if it's too loud, I'll move. It's not too um, loud. What I'm coming up against um, is the whole resilience part of the NRF. And I'm noticing my triggers in um, seeing Ari struggle and seeing Ari be different. I am coming up against two things. It's like, I re I'm realizing that I am quick to jump in to help and solve. Um, and then the other thing that is becoming interesting for me to think about and curious how to move forward with is that he is starting to understand and ask questions about why he can't do things like other kiddos. Mm, that is a painful thing for a mama. Yeah, it's really hurting me. Yes, that is rough. So, right, so it's like, I don't want, so it feels like this double stab because when he struggles, I wanna make it easier for him because it's already so hard. You know, mm -hmm. and and hold on a second. I am going to suggest if you can move, it might be distracting. Okay. 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 New quiet location. Yes, in a beanbag chair. I love it. The Papa San chair. Yeah. So. So you're you were saying you're talking about the NRF concept of resilience with this child who is recognizing that he has limitations that other people don't have. Yeah. And that's painful. When children start, to, it starts to dawn on them as they look around that, oh, I am different. Right. And the fear is they're gonna look around and say, I'm different and I am inferior. Right. Something wrong with me. Yeah, and just like the truth of the matter that it's unfair. It would seem that way if we're focusing on deficits and we're focusing on in that comparison, what your child can't do and other children can do. That is true. And that's what I am doing. Yes. And it's easy to do that when our society is mostly set up for people who are not neurodivergent. Right. Right. You know, and the, the pluses of Ari are so incredible. I mean, he is a heart. He is a beam of light. He is a connector. He cares deeply about people, you know, in the grand scheme of life. Like, I think more neurotypical people, well, not I think, I know people tell me this. They're like, God, I wish I could be more like your son. I mean, he has a real gift. Like he, he is like, I mean, I just go like this all the time. He's just a beam from his heart of of craving connection with people, you know? But he also wants to be able to walk outside without me next to him. He also wants to be able to walk across the street without me demanding that he holds my hand, you know? Like, and I, I just, I just like, I hear myself constantly say all right buddy but we got to do this for safety and mm -hmm. it's losing its meaning to him and I'm sure it's fucking annoying 100 percent, I get it I'm annoyed do you have a reflective response for that where he can join in on the solution rather than just hearing a solution from you I guess not in that situation. No, maybe I do sometimes, but I'm not aware of like a go-to. I mean, there are times where I'm like, okay, well, do you think you could push the cart? For example, if we're at the grocery store and okay. it lasts for a, a little that's bit. A, that's a still giving him a solution. 
Yeah. So no, I guess I don't have one. So what, what could, what could you do buddy to stay safe? But you're, okay. And I re reserve the right to ask the question then again, if he gives me an answer that is unsatisfactory because yeah, I'm of also course. dealing you always with do that when you, it's collaborative problem solving. Yeah. Okay. He has to deal with your side of it and his side of it. He has to be able to hold both of your perspectives. So he says, I'll be safe. And you can say, I need a plan. I need a plan. I need you to tell me how. Yep. And then he can say, oh, just da 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 da. And you can say, mm, the reason that won't work for me is because da 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 da. So what else have you got? Yeah. And then if he's, if you, he's exhausted his ideas, it can be, well, what about this? Would this work? Yeah. And the thing is, you're not moving forward until you come up with a solution. So he's antsy. He wants to get this solved so he can hurry up and get doing what he wants to do. But I have a feeling that'll push him into blue zone. If he gets antsy, he he starts to he starts to go blue on me. Which is well, fine. What's the blue about? Um, I think some I think he I think he starts to when pushed on something that is maybe cognitively challenging for him, mm. he goes to a zone out space. Yeah. And so then I will say, you, right? Like we on the same page and his go-to is, okay, mommy, or yeah. I'll do better next time, which I you. know. And he's been saying this since he was very little. That's like his way of, of shutting me up and moving on because he doesn't want to deal with it. Because he can't. Well, it might be helpful to do. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. That's I was just. Re that's because he. I feel like at that time he goes from an eight-year-old to a seven-year-old to an eight-year-old to a three-year-old. Right. He's just yeah, moving you're right. real yeah. quick in those in those levels of engagement. Hmm. So if he um, were to engage with this before the situation. Sure. Yes. That'll Where give him time. Stakes aren't so high. Yes. And that's on me. Because I've got a million things going on in my head and I'm actively trying to change the way I parent. And it's hard. Of course. And I, for and I forget, right, that I, yeah. I need to talk to him in the car when we first get in the car before we even go somewhere about the expectation so he can be thinking about it. So it doesn't make him anxious. Mm -hmm. I need some note cards in my car. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just to clarify, when you're talking about the expectations, you're saying we have this standard of how to behave. Uh, yes. What can you do to reach that standard? And how can I help? Right. We need to be safe. Mm -hmm. when we are out and about yeah I do not want you hurt right and I, I mean he he knows like I tell him a hundred times a day <laughs> what is mommy's number one job to keep me safe and that I mean he knows that on well, you on might want to shift that to what is your number one job ah to keep me safe I think that's a great idea. And I think that's going to be interesting now that he's, you know, he's, he's eight, he's such a big kid. So now that you're such a big kid, your number one your job, job. Your, this is <laughs> your job now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, are you doing your job? Ah. Okay. I like that. And can I help you do your job? Do you need some ideas of how to get how to get through from here to there in a safe way that's still fun? Right. 
That's still because, fun. Because joy is your priority too. A hundred percent. So yeah. let's keep, make sure that stays in the conversation. And I'm noticing a lot because it is really on the forefront of my mind that I am so much more silly and like I am answering questions to him with him in like a very immature way and he just loves it you know um <laughs> wish I could be a fly on the wall for that that sounds fun. Sh- I can make that happen I, can make that. <laughs> I mean today I said something about poop and he goes you said the magic word and I said I sure did <laughs> um <laughs> yeah uh he's yeah okay so your job now is to be a co-worker with mommy and keeping you safe I'm the foreman and you're the construction worker whatever I would suggest that you give him the the damn Just job give him the job yeah that makes it feel a lot more autonomous if you're the boss and he's the employee he doesn't feel that autonomy he doesn't just like regular bosses and employees relationships yeah. Yep. Employees have a hard time taking ownership of their job when they have a boss. Sure. 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 I do. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, okay. Like this is your job now. This is how hunter gatherer societies do it. They give their children autonomy and they make their children think that they're not being watched when they are. Yeah. So that they, that they really feel that sense of agency. And then when things go awry, they can step in. Right. But they don't want their children to be self-conscious. No. And I don't want to, I don't want to be that fear monger mom. Like this morning, and this is a double problem because my husband is still uh, resistant to putting tools away. And Ari as we have discovered this week, is very capable of plugging things in, i.e. the iron. And then this morning, I walked, I said, I, all right, buddy, I need you to go to the car. I'll be right there. And I walk outside and Ari, yes, all the, all the sanders, and these are benign, mostly benign tools, but still a power tool and not really the point. But two of the sanders were unplugged and one of the sanders was a battery operated one and Ari's playing with it. And my, I wasn't, I didn't handle, I, I didn't handle it. Well, I said, no, nobody, you know, better than that. And I didn't yell. Mm -hmm. And I, I said, for for that, pat yourself on the back. Yeah. Pops for not yelling. That was good. Yeah. But I also saw him shrink because he got caught and he didn't let, you know, and I know I can, I can physically feel that feeling from a kid, like that nervous pit in my stomach, like, uh uh-oh, I'm in trouble, Mm -hmm. you know? And then I said, you're not going to, if I I said, if you, which I probably shouldn't have said, because I also know he can't usually hear me at that point when he's shutting down or, or in trouble, But I said, you're not going to be able to use the sander tonight. I punished him. Mm. And so I'm going to go back on that when Mm. I pick him up. And I'm going to say, we need to learn how to use the sander safety, safely. Mm -hmm. So I'll be with you. And you can tell me if you want to use it. And we can do it together. So you might want to start with, I'm sorry. A hundred percent. Yes. I made a mistake. You are so curious about these tools and you just want to be helpful. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. And you made a mistake. You can say, and you made a mistake. And the way that I want to handle that is not to punish you, but to teach you instead. So let's learn how to use this sander. Perfect. And you will hear him as he grows older saying, I'm sorry. I made a mistake, (laughs) you know, as a teenager, you'll hear him say things like that. Other parents will never hear their children apologizing, you know, really from the heart. (laughs) Parents who don't really model that. This will be good. This is perfect. Because I did tell him when we spoke about this a couple weeks ago, you know, I said, 
I know you want to play with all those tools. I said, so I don't want to stop you. You just need to yell, mom, I really want to play with the tools and I'll come out and make sure that it's safe. It's not as fun to have mom there. Sorry. No, you I might want to bring, bring a reflective question to your husband and say, what should we do about the tools being left out and Ari plugging them in? I did. What are your thoughts? Oh, and tell me how, what he said. It didn't go well. He said, he said, he said, they were unplugged. And I said, that's not the point, Jim. I said, this is about carelessness in other tools. He is getting smart about how to plug things in. I don't want him to plug in the nail gun. I don't want him to have the drill without okay, you. So on. that's not very really reflective. It wasn't very reflective. And then I said, <laughs> you're right. It was not very so reflective. What do we do about the fact that he's plugging things in now? Right. So I, so in my non-reflective yeah. acts, I was like, do you, I said, do you think we could just put all the tools away at night? And he didn't want to do that. He was like, he has, this you gave him the solution. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He didn't get a chance to think of his own solution before you gave it to him. He has told me in the past, and maybe it would have been different this morning. So I will ask him again that he believes Ari should just not touch them. Okay, so great. What do we do when he does touch them? He's going to touch them. He has a neuro difference and he doesn't have the mental capacity to resist his impulses to suppress his impulses he doesn't have the executive system maturity to do that right now so understanding that his brain is not up to uh, following that rule because he can't think before he acts what would you suggest Because I left that front, I left that twenty second conversation so frustrated, and I said, "You know what? I'll Understandable. Make sure, I'll make every, um, I'll just make sure at night everything's put away. All your tools are put away." And he's thinking you're just enabling him to act immaturely. You're keeping him a baby, and so whatever behavior Ari has is your fault. Oh, hundred percent. Yep. Nailed it. Hundred percent. Mm-hmm. And so it goes with mothers across the nation. <laughs> yeah. Mothers of neurodiverse kids. This is such a repeated pattern. Vicious cycle. All over the place it's happening. And not just the not just in the US, across the world, this is happening with neurodiverse kids. The mom's fault for being too permissive and too nurturing and too nice. And when the dad takes over, everything just goes to. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I, I I will say I think Ari masks his behavior when he's. With yeah, his that's the other. That's. That's the other problem is that it looks like everything's going great when dad takes well, over. And that's what, and that's what my husband says. Well, he acts totally different with me. And I'm like, yeah, because you're, you're mean. You yeah. And you're, yeah. And they don't understand that he's just masking. They might know it at some level. I don't, well, that's I don't think, I don't think Jim does. I think he really thinks that Ari is far more capable than he is. When I think Ari is going into a survival mode so that he doesn't get in trouble. And what's wrong with masking? We all grew up masking. So, totally. and what's wrong with masking is that if they can't express their emotions and if they can't be true to who they are and what, what they're experiencing, 
the learning doesn't really happen very well. They don't actually learn that much and they just keep getting into a punishment behavior punishment cycle. And for kids with who are neurotypical, that can sometimes end okay. Yeah. I mean, not ideally, because there's often some mental or emotional anguish in adulthood and they end up in addiction and, you know, but for a neuro atypical neurodiverse kid, that can really stunt their growth, which we prefer does not get stunted. We want them to have the best optimal development that they can have. And masking does not help that executive system develop. Right. Oh, is eight too old to create new pathways for this? <laughs> oh my gosh, no. Okay. I feel like I have not old. given him enough reflective opportunity as I have probably nurtured well, I haven't nurtured too much, but I've probably made it a little easy for him, you know, more than I should. Which is understandable because you're managing a lot and you want it to be easier for you. A hundred percent true. And you want it to be easier for him because you see that his life is not easy. Right. So it's perfectly understandable. <laughs> yeah. And we also in our society haven't really understood resilience very much until now and the importance of providing the challenge with the support. Right. For resilience. We are good at giving challenge without support. Oh yeah. Figure it out. And we're getting good at taking away the challenge with support. <laughs> Right. And now we're now it's time to learn how to provide the challenge with support. Yeah. All right. Well, that is what I will be working on next. Now, starting today. Cool. Is using the sander together and making him is his own boss of being safe. Nice. And asking my husband, knowing that Ari has a hard time stopping and making safe choices. He needs the neuroscience. He needs to hear his executive system and of his brain is not developed enough to suppress his impulses to just do what he sees excites him yeah so you're wanting him just to not do it requires more brain development and we can give him that brain development we can grow his brain development by helping him think it doesn't grow his brain development to come down on him that actually yeah. stunts his development. So, I mean, I can say it'll, it, you know, well, in my mind, I'm thinking, Ari knowing that the tools are put away, that's a problem he has to solve. Mom, dad, I want to, I want to drill or mom, dad, I want to sand, you know, and then that will give us an opportunity. Okay. Here's, I'm going to put a key, a lock. Here's the key. We need to learn how to open the door. Like it, I think, you know, so much of what we've, I've experienced in this journey with Ari is that everything with him takes 50,000 more steps. Yeah. Life is busy. And so, yeah. you know, like my husband, I had to text him yesterday and say, Ari really wants to sand. My husband owns or is, is the boss of a shop. And I've been asking for years, like, could you make him a fidget board? Could you do some things so he can start to do these things? And he's, I don't, anyway, for whatever reason, he hasn't done it. And I just said, can you please set up a board 
just so he can sand. And he, he did it last night. He did. He <laughs> clamped down a, a board and let Ari just go to town sanding. So I understand why Ari went to the sander this morning. I still, one night of doing it for 12 minutes does not make him able to do it by himself. Right. And it, nor should it give my husband the idea that it, he's able to do it by himself. Like, oh, well, it was okay. It was just the battery one. Not the point. So, I don't know. And if I'm off base, I know you'll tell me. No, I'm not going to tell you that you're off base. I'm just thinking about how you can help him feel like what he he'll feel what he can do. So he wants to get up and he wants to go get the sander if it's locked. And he comes to you and he says, I need to get the sander. And then you get the key and you give him the key and you he unlocks it. And you make sure he never knows where that key is going to be. <laughs> and then he is sanding while you're around. Yeah. You, so he doesn't even have to know you can't do that. Right. He just knows that he can't get the key and you go get the key because he's not going to believe you or agree with you that he can't do it. He's going to feel like he can't. And you oh, undermine his competence, his sense of competence. So there's three drives of human, human drives towards happiness, connection, competence, and autonomy. And so when you just stand around, you're giving him that connection. When he's, you're not talking to him about what he can't do, but you're giving him opportunities while you're observing. You're giving him his competence and his autonomy. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to apologize. <laughs> I'm going to tell him why I'm sorry. We're going to have a discussion about tool safety and how How can he be safe? Like, what do you, what are the things that he can do to be safe? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to remind him that I just need to be aware that he's with and around the tools. And then mm -hmm. we'll put him in his, and then he can use I'm, the tools. I'm going to suggest that you don't, if, if you can get them locked up. Right. Right. Okay. Sure. Then you don't have to have the conversation. I need to be around. You're just going to be around. Yep. Yeah. Cause it's a bummer to have, to hear that you have to be around. Like that's a dampening my joy right now to hear that. Now you don't have the ability to lock them at this moment. That's not a possibility. So I'm just wondering um, how you can give him the message. I want to be there. I want to, don't leave me out. Uh, Don't forget about me. I have to be here too. I, I want to be here with the sander. Yeah. Okay. Can we have a rule that I get to be here too? And that you don't do this by yourself? Because I don't, I don't want to be left out. Yeah. Yeah. He will love that. Happy I'm not going to believe you about the safety anyway. So you have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay. I can have any buy-in around that. <laughs> no. I'm safe, mom, as he's putting the sander to his face. Yeah. Feels so good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That I can do and report back on. That that will be good. Ugh. That will work perfectly for him. You know, and it's funny because yes, I will be around and I will always have my head on a swivel and I'll be watching, but it's like realizing that the dishes can wait, you know, realizing that it is more important for what Ari is experiencing and doing and learning and processing in those times, even if it's just five minutes, like, and I have this internal ticker going, oh my God, I need to do this. Oh my God, I need to do that. And really all I need to be doing is not watch watching him. 
Yeah, you just have to look like you're not watching him while you're watching him. Yeah, when I, I mean, like more esoterically, like this is what uh, matters in life, you know, like. Say that again. This is what matters in life. Like not uh -huh. the, not the list, not the ongoing things in my head. Like it's, it's, okay. it is so much more important to support him in this yeah. than it is for me to do the dishes in that moment. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, that feels good. That feels like <sighs> that kind of touches on all of the things that we were, I brought, you know, like just like giving him more autonomy and focusing on the things that he can do versus the things he can't. Mm -hmm. Way more fun. I'm feeling so much joy in my body just hearing you say those things. Yeah. Cool. So thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome.